CataractCoach.com, Marfan Syndrome, Sublux Lens. Look at those stretched out zymer fibers. So what's going to be your approach in this tough case? Now, the patient is, of course, young. These are young patients who have Marfan Syndrome. And the lens, there's no cataract. There's no lens density. The lens is very soft, butter soft. Looks like some um, agent's been put inside the eye to expand that pupil. Some viscoelastic in being injected here to make a barrier. And wow, look at those zylar fibers. Wow, so stretched out. Now starting here making a rexus. And keep in mind, where is the lens? And so how are you going to center up that lens capsule rexus, right? So think about it. Look, that's the equator already. So we've got to get this thing centered appropriately. And yeah, therefore, subincisionally, it's going right up even underneath the iris. That's fantastic. This is a very tough case. And the question I have for you is, how are you going to fixate the lens? Removing the, the crystal lens is easy. It's butter soft. You can just aspirate it out. How are you going to give support? Now, it's a progressive disease. We can see the lens has moved to one side on the right side of your screen there, subluxed in that direction. Is it sufficient just to put support on this left side of your screen then? Or should you do it for both sides of the screen? And so now putting in a, looks like an uh, iris hook, but using that to support the capsule. There are capsule hooks that are available also, but this certainly works. And be gentle here. You don't want to damage that capsule. And so here's some visco dissection. I like that technique. Just to separate it, looks like an extra hook going inside there to even more, more capsule support. And be gentle on those. Now, more visco dissection with a dispersive viscoelastic. You'll be able to get this lens aspirated out very easily. Now, the one thing to keep in mind is, guess what? This patient didn't have lens subluxation a few years ago. Maybe a little bit, but it's gotten worse very recently. So this lens subluxation, again, is a progressive disease. The Marfan syndrome, remember, is also associated with other systemic problems, such as cardiac and you see the patient's hands, right? And the patient has very, high, very tall patients, excessive height. So all these things are important features of the disease. And obviously, you should work with your primary care doctors to help the patient address any of those potential problems too. But in the eye, it's progressive. And you got to be careful that you don't want to do a procedure that's not going to be stable for the long term. Remember, the patient's young. You want to do a procedure that's going to last for the patient's lifetime. So there you go. There's a capsule tension ring with an extra part on it, right? That's the Sioni ring. And there's already a pre-placed suture, which is very smart. And placing in the Sioni ring here, getting it around the capsule or bag, to the, around the equator. There it goes very nicely. And again, pre-placement of that suture can help simplify things. And that looks like a proline suture or polypropylene. And that Sioni ring is going to be placed very carefully, very gently in the capture bag completely. And you get again, a very delicate procedure here, getting this in there. Sometimes the second hand can help also guide it. There it is. There's the second hand to guide it. And now you can use another grip here on that and get it nicely placed in the bag. So there's the hook of the Sioni ring, and that's again already been threaded with a small gauge proline. So I don't think this is going to be a belt loop. Normally the belt loop ones, which we'll, we've showed you before, and I'll show you again coming up actually in a few weeks, for the belt loop type procedures, you're typically using a, a 6.0 proline is a very common one, sometimes even 5.0 proline, and then using that flange technique here. But here instead, a smaller gauge proline, and it looks like making a little bit of a, a pyridomy here, and a groove. So okay, you're going to make a groove and bury this suture in that groove. So now we're going to see what we got here. Pushing through. Oh, there we go. Well, the very carefully threading the needle into the hollow bore of the other needle and passing that suture out and doing the same on the other side. And now both ends of that suture are going to be within that scleral little uh, um, incision that was made there, probably about half scleral depth. And now we can get this suture buried. And that's a good idea. You don't want it exposed there. And so that's being tied up here. Maybe I'd guess it's... Uh, Maybe 8-0, would you say? 8-0 proline? I think it's bigger than 10-0. And that's tied up very nicely. That's going to provide some good support. Here comes the IOL being injected in the capture bag. Let's see, nice and easy. There it is, the three-piece lens. I like the three-piece lens because you've got more options for placement in the future. If you need to you know, go back and suture it or do other maneuvers, a three-piece lens gives you a little bit more flexibility, so I like that. So now it looks like that 
suture was tied, the proline that's and it's been buried, the knot's buried, and that suture you can see sits nicely in that groove. And now, oh yeah, a young person, you're probably gonna want to check that incision and put a suture in if needed. This is a really neat case. But my question is, is this one suture enough? Will the patient develop zonal laxity on the opposite side? On your screen, the right side of the screen. Will there be future zonal laxity there that will require another intervention? What do you think? Leave me your comments below and tell me how you would have done this case. Beautiful job.